Hi guys, this is Tom from CodeJoint. Um, this is going to be another intermediate tutorial in Unity and uh, today we're going to talk about Lambda expressions, um, actions and carry on a little bit about coroutines. Um, if you've seen my last video on coroutines, the content of this should be absolutely fine. Um, if you're not familiar with coroutines, um, please feel free to check out my last video or uh, look at Unity Gems, for example, that's another good website, and uh, just Google around. Um, okay, so if you guys don't know what a lambda expression is, I think the easiest way to understand it is um, it's, it's basically a method which is written with the simplest possible syntax that you can imagine. Like, um, a lambda expression doesn't have a name, um, you don't pass the types of arguments, you can pass arguments to a lambda expression, but um, you, don't, you don't tell them what, what types they are, it's all inferred by the compiler. And um, basically you, you take the heart of a method um, but, and you get rid of everything else. You leave it to as, as bare minimum as possible. Um, I think, especially for video games programming, they're really useful in conjunctions with actions, which are, um, basically it's, it's a type safe uh, function pointer, um, which doesn't, uh, doesn't take any arguments and it doesn't return a value. So that's what a action is. Um, it's a special type of delegate. Um, I think they're really useful to ensure that you don't repeat code where necessary. So there could be an example where you have five different um, methods that you need or five different tasks that you want to write. And um, you, you might think that you might have to write five different methods to make sure that you, um, you, you achieve each of those goals separately. But if, if those methods have some features in common and you see that they're, they're very similar apart from, say, maybe a few lines at the beginning and a few lines at the end uh, of code at the beginning and end, then actions and lambda expressions can be really useful so that you just write one method which has the, the, the common features in it of each of those methods and um, then you just use lambda expressions to fill in the rest. Um, so to demonstrate lambda expressions and actions and a little bit of coroutines again, here's a little scene uh, where the, uh, the sphere here is looking out for the cube here. And um, well, all that this scene really shows is that um, a way of making um, this sphere have a uh, reaction time. So if, if, when the, uh, the cube goes into view from behind this, um, this wall, the sphere will actually have to wait zero point will actually wait zero point five seconds before it returns um, and says, "Yeah, I've actually seen this thing." And uh, when it does see it, it will flash a different color. Um, so there you go, you see him flashing. Um, using lambda expressions as well, there's an example of of, of how we've used a lambda expression. When it sees you at the end of that, when it successfully sees you, it fires off a message to the console. But also when it sees you. Uh, ten times in total when it sees sorry when it sees the cube ten times in total it will flash blue instead of green so there we go I'm going to wait for that to happen and there we go so now I'm going to flash up um, the script editor and I'll show you how I achieve this okay so here we are in mono develop and uh, this is the script that basically is responsible for um, all the behavior that you saw in the scene a moment ago um, it's on the sphere, and um, it, all it does is it. There's only one public variable, which is the transform of the cube that we're trying to look at. Um, it's also important to note that uh, we have to include the system namespace. This is a C# -sharp script, and um, if we want to use actions, we have to be using the system namespace. Um, so the script basically composes of three important bits and the update as well. Um, the first bit is a vision check method. Uh, which basically returns true or false depending on if when we raycast between the uh, cube and the sphere if the first thing we hit is the cube then we return true if it's anything else then we return false so it will return false if we hit the wall for example um, the next method is a is in field of view method which again returns true or false um, depending on whether or not the cube is in a volume um, which is a square based pyramid uh, with the top of the pyramid based at the um, at the sphere, so it's like um, you know having twenty twenty vision or something like that, and then it's sort of boxed off at the top the bottom, depending on uh, the height you are above or below the uh, sphere. The last aspect of this script really is um, this uh, site site check coroutine, 
And um, I'll go through the arguments in a moment, but the first one, two, three, four, five are really responsible for the vision stuff. Um, but basically what this, this coroutine does is when we enter the coroutine, if we can see the cube, um, i.e. we check if we're in the field of view and if we can, we, when we ray cast you, we can see, to, see you, we enter this while loop and then that all, all the while, every, every frame that we're in that while loop, we um, iterate a timer. And when the timer reaches the reaction time, which is this parameter here, then we enter the while loop. And then what you see here on this line is what pretty much looks like I'm calling a method. So when the timer is greater than the reaction time and um, this uh, oncomplete method is not a null method, we, we, call, uh, we call what looks like a method, but it's not quite a method. Um, it's actually an action, which is this last parameter up here. And if you just remember a second ago, I said an action is a type safe function pointer which points to a function which has no arguments and returns a void type. So it's like you could have a method which was uh, you could define as private void method name and then no arguments. That That is a method that a action can point to. And this line of code just basically says whatever method our action on complete is pointing to, call that method here. And um, that's that's basically how you use an action. Um, so we here we're going to use lambda expressions, but if we had a another method that we had in mind that we want to call that we could point to here, we could equally pass the name of that method here if it uh, was uh, the right type for an action to point to. But we want to use lambda expressions because uh, it allows us to repeat code. So um, this is how you actually use them. You can see in our update function here that um, if we not if we're not in the coroutine already, we start the coroutine. Um, and then we pass our target, which is our cube, and then this is the field of view angle, the distance away from the target we can be so that we can see them. Um, this is the height above or below the target, and this is the reaction time. But then the final argument, which is the important one, is the lambda expression. And this is how you write a lambda expression. It might look a bit scary at first, but honestly, it's really not. Um, the brackets here just signify that we're not passing any arguments to this lambda expression. Um, because remember we've defined site check to take a um, action type so we can't pass any arguments but we don't need to and uh, then this this equal sign and greater than sign is called the lambda operator and that partis uh, partitions the argument definition and the body of the lambda expression which is basically what you'd see in any method call and here you can see that we iterate a counter and that uh, if that counter is um, equal to 10 then we change the color that we that the cube flashes and then we just simply call a coroutine color flash which flashes a color like it says for 0.2 of a second here um, and then it returns it to its original gray color so we've we've effectively defined a method on the fly we didn't have to set up another method um, with a different name and then you know give it a void type and all that sort of stuff we can just put it you know we can just plug and play it straight into the uh, the, the method call or the coroutine call here for site check. And this means that if, for example, we had a finite state machine where you know the, the sphere might be have several different behaviors like an idle state or an attacking state, but we want to check many times if we can see the, uh, the cube. When it does see the cube, we can plug in any logic that we want here that we, we think is suitable. So if we wanted it to change state, we could put in a change of state here. We could, you know, we could use a, um, a numerator and change the state. Um, but this is just a simple example to demonstrate exactly how lambda expressions and actions work, so we've done something simple. But I use these a lot in my uh, demo, which you can see some more videos of on my channel, um, to, uh, to, to get some, basically some uh, useful logic in when we see the, uh, when the bots see the player. And that's basically all there is to it. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Um, if anything's confusing you, please ping me a message. Um, leave a comment below and um, thanks very much.